This episode is sponsored by Honey Badger. In addition to Honey Badger's great error monitoring service, they also have an uptime monitoring for web developers. And Honey Badger has recently shipped an update that allows for public status pages that can help communicate outages to your customers. In addition to your uptime monitoring, Honey Badger now monitors your SSL certificates. And Honey Badger now has actions which will allow you to do bulk updates to all your errors, or you can set defaults for incoming errors. When working with a Ruby on Rails application, and we go to a route that doesn't exist in our application, then we get an error where we can see that there is no route that matches the endpoint that we're trying to go to. And this can be very helpful as we're developing our application. However, I'm going to make a quick change on the back end, restart the Rails application, and I'll refresh the page. And then we would see what we will get in a production environment. And so in this episode, we're going to have a look at how we can configure our own 404 page so that it looks a bit nicer, something like this. And there's a few different approaches that we can take with this. And as we go through, we'll explore some of the different issues on each approach. And ultimately, it'll be up to you and your team on which route you want to go with. And so, in a fresh Rails 7 application, I'm first going to go under the environments, and we'll go to the development.rb. And if we look at around line 15 on a fresh Rails application, you'll see this option, consider all requests local. And if we set this to false, and then if we run the Rails application, then we'll be able to go to our endpoint, refresh the page, and then see what we would see in production. However, the main issue with this is that you wouldn't really want it to be like this for all requests, especially because this is also going to capture any kind of error 500s or anything else like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to wrap this in a conditional check, and then I'm just going to change its name to the errors dev. So if this file exists, then it'll consider all requests is not local. Otherwise, it'll fall back to the default. And so we could just touch that file with the temp errors-dev.txt. And then when we start a Rails application and we refresh the page, then it'll show us the error page. Otherwise, if we remove that file and if we start up our Rails application and if we refresh the page, then we get the normal behavior in a development environment. And I would much prefer this approach instead of sending it to true or false explicitly, just so in situations where I'm working on error pages or some of the styling, then the other developers on the team don't have to worry about these kind of changes as well, because they may be working on something where they are getting errors and they need to see what those actual errors are. And another approach, if we go under the application.rb in the config folder, is that we can set the config dot exceptions underscore app, and we can set this equal to self.routes. And then this is going to use our Rails routes to then do a match, and we can do a match on something like a 404, and we can send this to an errors controller and the action not found. We can do something similar for a 422 or an error 500. And we can take these to the unprocessable underscore entity, and for the error 500, we can take this to the action internal underscore server underscore error. And then we can also generate that controller. We'll just call it the errors. And then we'll take in the not found to create the not found action. We'll also have the unprocessable entity and then the internal server error. And before we test this out, I'm going to enable that errors dev text file again. So we run our application and we refresh the page. We then get our errors page. And so we have our 404 not found. But let's go into our welcome controller and then I'll just put anything in here just so when we go to our home page, instead of a not found, we would get the internal server error. So now we have two different paths that we were able to test this out with just so we know things are working. And so if we have a look at the errors controller, one thing that I don't like about this is that it's using the same layout as the rest of our application. And I really don't like that because I want this to be its own page and look different than the rest of the application. So in the errors controller, I could put a global layout for this controller, and then I could just call it something like errors. However, there's actually an easier way to do this. So I'll comment this out, and then we'll go into the layouts folder. And I'll just copy out our application layout, and I'll just call this the errors. And so because under the layouts, 
we have a file called errors that is the same controller name as our errors controller, then this will get picked up automatically. So if I delete the navigation and our flash messages, and I just yield whatever page we are rendering, I can go back and refresh the page, and now you'll see that we got rid of our top navigation. So we don't have to explicitly set that layout errors within that controller. Rails will automatically pick up the errors layout. But there are a few problems with this approach. For example, if we go into our application controller, and if we have a before action, and we're just going to do something that's a private method, and if we have an error within that before action, then that's going to happen before our errors controller. And so let's have a look at what that would look like. And so now we just get a plain text. And so that's not really good. We lose any kind of styling or layouts that we have. And now we're left with something that just looks pretty bad. So if you're going to go the approach on your Rails application, where you're setting your own exceptions app to one of your routes, and even if that errors controller is very simple, and you're just using action view to render it, you want to make sure that if you do have any kind of before actions or anything else that could potentially be a problem, that you're going to skip those within your errors controller. So that way, when we come back and refresh, we are then getting it rendered without any problems. So that's just something you need to be mindful of because I have been in situations where I was using my own routes for the error pages, but the error page that was being generated also had an error so the user was left with that ugly error 500 page. So now that we talked about some of the drawbacks with this approach, one of the nice things about it is if we go into our views, we can go into the errors and we can go into our internal server error and we're able to modify this. We can also modify the errors layout. Maybe we don't want that container with the white border, but instead we want something else and I'll just paste that in there. And so with that CSS change, if we come back and refresh, now that looks a lot better. And one nice thing about being able to go through our Rails application to display these error pages is that we're able to then also use whatever style sheets that we have. So I can get rid of the ones that we don't need and we can keep this page just very simple. I can even drag in some images. And these are some images that my daughter drew for me for this episode. But we're going to be able to add in these images because they are going through our asset pipeline fairly easily. So if we go into our internal server error, I could do an image underscore tag. I can do the 500.png. We can also change up our heading. And then we can also do something like a link to, to our root path. And we can give this a nice class as well. And then we can also change out the text to something that's a bit more informative. And so we can test this out now. I'll go back to the home path. And now we have a nice error 500 with a message, and then we can go back home. Of course, our homepage is the page that has the error, so it's not going to do anything here. And one final thing I would probably add on here is just a fluid class on our image, just so as the screen shrinks, then it looks good on here as well. But we can take this, and we can go ahead and do this for the not found page. So I'll change this to a 404, and then I'll also update the text. We can try going to a different route. I'll just go to the forward slash users, and then we got our 404. And so I don't have a good example right now for the unprocessable entity, just because I would have to set something up. But if you want to see what that image looks like, it's just the 422 with some little sad faces. But it would work much in the same way. And so back to the original problem with this, even though we do have some of the nice benefits of using our ERB helpers, and the asset pipeline to display the images is that if there is any kind of problem within the controller or within the application controller or anything that it's rendering, then you could run into a lot of problems. One thing that I would probably do is our application controller is inheriting from the action controller base. On our errors controller, I would probably just inherit from the action controller base as well. So that way I don't have to worry about a lot of the other things in my application that could be affecting it, but you could still have issues with initializers or some other kind of files. So you still wanna take caution. So that way, if we come back, refresh the page or go back home, then we're still getting the nice looking error pages. And so now I've created another Rails application. It's a fresh Rails application using ES build and CSS bundling with Bootstrap. However, the point of this application 
is that we're going to have a look at the public folder where we have a 404, 422, and a 500. We can start up this Rails application. And now if we visit the 404 or the 422 or the 500, then we see these rendered out because our Rails application is serving these. And so with this approach, we're just going to write some standard raw HTML. We can replace this HTML with our own. And in this case, I'm still going to have that image. So I do need to copy those over into the public folder. So now that I have the images and I've modified the HTML, we can come back and go to the 404 page and then it's looking nice again. In our Rails application, if we did go to a route that did not exist, then we're still going to get the no route matches. But in a production instance, the end user would see our actual 404 image and the nicer looking page. And so we can do something similar for the 422 and the 500. We would just need to make sure that we are updating the text. And once we update the text on all of these, we can then go back and try it out. We got our 400, the 422, and also the error 500. And so the nice thing about this approach is that it is going to work. We don't have to worry about anything else in our Rails application because either the Puma or the Nginx is going to be serving these directly. And so this is by far the safest approach, but it is a bit more annoying because you don't have any of the nice styling from what you've already added into your framework. And say you can be left having to create your own styling, or one thing that you could do is you could just import in from a CDN. And so that way, as you're importing this in from a CDN, then we can use all the bootstrap markup that we like, and we can even keep our image here. And so this is probably the easiest approach. However, you are still having to reference something on a CDN, but it will probably be a lot more familiar. But if that CDN ever goes down or if there's any issues there, and we can just kind of simulate that by removing that link. And if we refresh the page, then it definitely doesn't look as nice as it did. One little hack that you could do is to just save that file. In this case, it's our bootstrap min CSS. And I'm just going to copy that directly over into our public folder. I'll rename it so it's a bit easier to work with. And we can say at the home path, this is the CSS file that we want to use. We can save this, go back to our application, refresh, and it still looks nice. And if you have your assets, like your CSS and images, automatically being added into a CDN like Cloudflare or something similar, then this should still be a very performant page. But again, if there is any kind of issue, with the CSS or the JavaScript that you're adding into these pages, then that is something that you're going to have to maintain manually. It's not going to get picked up from the Rails application as if you were using the errors controller. But again, remember if you are using something like this errors controller by setting the config exceptions app to the self routes and creating your own routes and controllers for this, then this is prone to errors because any other kind of problem within your Rails application could prevent your pages from displaying nicely or at all, depending on what the situation is. Well, that's all for this episode. Thanks for watching. For more videos, check out driftandruby.com.